with DMT, uh, a form of swamp gassing mm. happens, which is, yeah, of course you're seeing shit like that. You're high. What, you're going to believe that shit's real? You think there's really so, you really saw an elf? You're fucking frying your brain, man. <laughs> so, you know, it's swamp gassing. You're d- discredited. Right. And, and, you know, how I, I'm sure you hear this a lot because you do yeah. lectures and you're around psychonauts a lot. And I think it's a very sad thing when somebody has to preface whatever insight they had with, but you know, I was really high. I was mm-hmm. high, you know, I was as though the experience itself completely negates the <laughs> data r- that was received within that zone. So to this, this is something I'm very excited uh, about that you are, that you are doing. I, I love the article you wrote on Graham Hancock's website regarding the DMT entities. Yes. And I just wonder if we could just talk a little bit about your theories regarding these, uh, whatever you want to call them, that Terrence McKenna famously called them self-transforming machine elves. Mm. I never saw those things, or, or what did he call them? Um, not toddlers, he had a name, like he called tykes. them tykes. Tykes, yes, yes. yes. <laughs> but I, w- I would love to hear your theories on what these things are. <laughs> yeah, so the self transforming machine elves, the um they it's interesting, right? Because everyone associates the machine elves with Terence McKenna. Um that's I guess that's the number one thing. When you think of Terence McKenna, you think of self transforming machine elves, dribbling basketballs, right? Yeah. <laughs> um and What's interesting about machine elves, well, not machine elves specifically, right? But we're talking about, um, it's, to put it in scientific parlance, we're talking about a type of Lilliputian hallucination. Mm. Um, it, we're, uh, hallucinations of little people is how it would be described in the literature. Right. Um, so Terence McKenna, of course, made them famous. He made them really famous. And... When other people started seeing machine elves and started reporting them, um, this was Terence McKenna appeared kind of in the in the eighties. Really, I mean, he really burst onto the circuit, the psych, whatever that psychedelic circuit looked like. I was yeah. too young, um, but once he started writing about it and it started getting onto the internet, uh, it became very well known. These machine elves, uh, and then other people started saying, oh, I saw the same thing. Um, I also saw these little, and they have, they, they take various forms. So machine elves is perhaps not the best term for them. They, they, they always take the form of very small, lively, mischievous, uh, trickstery, um, jovial, happy-go-lucky, this kind of thing. They move very, very quickly. They dance around. They they jump in and out of your body uh, they they often display these objects often described Terence McKenna described them as like these a hyperdimensional Fabergé egg or something yes. these incredibly beautiful hyperdimensional objects they would show you and say look look at this um, they 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 like to put on a display that's kind of their their overall character if you like but the, yes. their form the way that they appear you know, whether they they look like typical Irish uh, leprechauns sometimes, or sometimes yeah. they look like little balls of stuff that is self-transforming, constantly yep. cha- forming themselves out of the, the material of the space. Um, so, so they're unified by their character, but they often have different visual forms. Um, now, what people started saying is that, well, you all, you all listen to Terence McKenna. That's why you're seeing um, machine elves, sure. because Terence McKenna told you we're going to see machine elves. Uh, and that's a difficult one to argue against sure. at first, at face value, because you say, well, a lot of people did. But then a lot of people didn't. And actually, we can go before McKenna. We can go back to... Well, let's go right back to the beginning. How far can we go back? We can go back to 1956, uh, which is when Stephen Zara, the Hungarian physician, um, who self-administered DMT for the first time, he synthesized it, uh, he injected it intramuscularly, and he had the world's first pure DMT trip uh, sometime in 1956. I think it was in April. 
Anyway, um, he started injecting it. In those days, it was pretty simple to do a study. He just kind of got volunteers uh, from <laughs> <Yeah>. the hospital, <laughs> his colleagues, I think, some patients, yeah. that kind of thing. Come on, gather around. And he injected them all with DMT. And there's a very interesting report in that very first study um, of uh, a woman, I think it was, who describes these small beings, uh, she said dwarf-like beings that move around very quickly. Um, that's all we got in terms of the trip report. She wasn't asked to expand upon it. But, but there, straight there from this very first study, you're starting to see something that sounds suspiciously like an elf, right? Yep. It's a small being that's lively, that's moving very, very quickly. Right. Then as we go through the, some of the more popular DMT users, uh, let's take Owsley, um, who uh, created, I think it was Orange Sunshine, right? Right. Owls, Owsley. Um, he, dis he, uh, he did a, um, uh, an interview where he was talking about DMT, and he mentioned he saw what he described as the Tinker Toy Men. Uh, again, with these little lively beings that right. you saw. Yes. Uh, Timothy Leary, as well, would talk about these small, uh, mischievous little creatures dancing around in, in the DMT trip. So it, it's not, we can't put it all down to a McKenna effect. It, right. it is not, it, it, is, it seems to be a, an intrinsic part of the DMT state. It's one of the characters that, whether you listen to Terence McKenna or not, one of the characters that you are likely to come across, one of the entity types you are likely to encounter in the DMT space is going to be these very small, lively, giggling, mis mischievous little beings that are right. kind of called machine elves. Right. Uh, now, now what, what are they? That's a, that's a different question. And Why do you see them? Uh, that's a different question. I think quite difficult to answer. Mm. We have some clues we can look at archetypal structures so um the archetype of the trickster the archetype of the clown right. um these kind of um universal experiences that go back to you know long before 1956 we're talking thousands and thousands of years yes. elves obviously leprechauns small dwarf like beings feature in the mythology um, not just in Irish mythology. Everyone's, of course, familiar with Gaelic, um, yep. the kind of Irish folklore of, of the leprechaun and the elves and things. Yeah. But actually, you can go back much further than that. Uh, and you find, uh, you know, in Mexico, in, in other parts of South America, uh, in Africa, you find these myths about these little mischievous beings that, that play tricks on people or lie to people uh, throughout mythology. So this, it's like you're tapping into something there. Ha the mechanism is not so easy to explain. But right. DMT seems to allow you to tap into that thread, if you like, that's sure. been running for thousands of years. And, you know, they, the, the elves, they come out of the pages of folklore uh, apparently you know but they're kind of brought back to life when you when you smoke dmt you're actually able to confront and meet these things that most people would only ever hear stories about right yes mm. and and the, the 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 there is a something to me that that, that there, there there's a difference in this experience uh, compared to other psychedelics you know lsd is I always seem like a, a way to kind of see your own projections in the mm. world. You can sort of watch the way your mood states will shift whatever you might be seeing on the walls. Maybe you're seeing, I don't, I'm, I don't know if you've seen it. I, I do think it's somewhat common. The skull thing or, or you're looking at your ceiling. Why the fuck did we take this? The ceiling is now skulls or yawning, <laughs> gaping <laughs> mouths or, d d you know, disintegration, death, the classic yeah, death. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, yeah, yeah, but yeah, yeah. your your mood shifts, and it seems like the that tapestry begins to change or reflect the shifting of your mood. I've always thought this is we're probably just seeing what we're always projecting into the world mm -hmm. it's via some. I don't know. I don't know what. That's maybe you understand that. But with DMT, the yeah. commonality in spaces visited and in 
whatever these beings are, to me, this is where it gets really interesting. Surely, and I, I think I was, you, you tweeted Strassman, they're doing a new study trying to use uh, some kind of form, of, some form of anesthesiology yeah. mixed in with DMT to create a more stable DMT trip. Uh, yeah. it, it, so that we can maybe spend a little bit more time in there recording yeah. the geography and the bio quote biology of this place this, this is the difference right like do you what are some other psychedelics that create shared experiences for people that you can think of well dmt is certainly that's the number one i mean what's beautiful about dmt as you say is that it's well it has a number of pharmacological peculiarities that make it really interesting in that it is it go takes you so deep so fast uh, um but uh, but then pulls you out again just as quickly a few minutes later right it has this it's not like with if you wanted to get you can people do say if you take very high doses of mushrooms for example you yep. can approach these dmt it starts to become dmt-esque uh, at very high doses, and you can start to approach the DMT space. But, you know, you have to take high doses. You have to deal with that for hours and hours and hours on end. Yeah. You know, once you're in, um, and it will come in waves, and it's 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 very difficult to, to manage for, for most people. But with DMT, it's like a bungee jump. Uh, one of those bungee jumps that drops you into the water, you know, like, yes, right. you're in there. <laughs> You know, yeah. uh, for a few minutes, then whew, you're dragged out again. You're like, how the fuck was that? You know, yeah. that's kind of the DM. That's what's amazing about DMT is it's unique in that it can. Well, apart from maybe salvanorin, which is a different beast altogether. But <sighs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but DMT is not. DMT seems to for most people when they take DMT, it has this comical. It's astonishing. It's shocking. Yes. It's um, horrifying in many ways, but that's just your kind of emotional response to it, I think, because right. it is so fucking strange, you know, bizarre, yes. right? As Terence McKenna used to always say, these are bizarre dimensions, you know, uh, and they really are. Yeah. Nothing can, can like can prepare you for that. But generally, uh, and you can look at the, the, the studies that have looked at the, the types of entities that you meet there, because it's who you meet that's really interesting, not so much where you go. Although that itself is, is, a, is a, a, you know, it's a, it's a level 10 on the intensity scale. Yes. Uh, but who you meet is really what makes the trip. Um, and studies have shown generally that about 95 percent more than 90 percent of the time you're going to meet somebody or meet entities that are nice right they're yeah. going to be friendly they're going to be welcoming they're going to have a great party when they see you burst through the veil into their domain yeah. uh, or they're going to guide you around uh, help you you know all these kind of things teach you um so 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 that's kind of nice about DMT. It is shocking, it is horrifying, it is terrifying like a roller coaster when yes. you first burst into the space. But once you're in there, um generally the the the, the entities display some kind of beneficence. They, it looks like they're very smart and they're very wise and they don't want to harm you for the most part. Right. With Salvia it's a different beast that you know. Yeah, totally. Then it, it's like mo mainly 90% or, of the time, it's, it's kind of flip. 90% of the time, it's just a horrible experience for most yes. people. But DMT isn't like that. So DMT, I think, uh, is, is the perfect molecule for studying the commonalities between, you know, going back to commonalities. I think uh, DMT is the perfect molecule for doing that. 